Hi everybody, welcome to this video. Well, I'm gonna give you, I can't talk, my top tips on how to get nines in GCSE science and maths. Now it's been two years since I've done my GCSEs, so I tried to like rack my brains and then remember what I actually did to revise. But I just remember when I was doing my science and maths GCSEs that they were my favourite exams to go into because I feel like for some subjects like history you can still like spend the morning or the night before cramming facts and stuff but for science it's kind of like you just keep on practicing the same questions the same things always come up same for maths and you just have to get a good night's sleep and walk into the exam confident that you're gonna smash it so these are just my top tips from what I remember now my first tip out of my five is to utilise Sean and YouTube in general. Please use free science lessons, it's honestly the best resource ever. I could not have done my GCSEs without Sean because he explains everything from the specification and he says potential questions that you'll be given, especially if you follow AQA GCSEs. But if you don't follow AQA then his videos are still useful because most GCSE specifications are quite similar. And also use this guy called Mr Tompkins Maths because he goes through GCSE past papers and I found that so useful because you should use your teachers and ask them on how to solve different questions but sometimes I found obviously it's effort to email teachers and you're not sure where they're gonna respond so just look up a YouTube video and see how the YouTube teacher solves the maths question and you can also play at two times speed so it's like information going into your head at twice the pace and um, it's just amazing really, that's what I did before the morning of all my maths GCSE exams, I just went through past paper walkthroughs, because for maths, honestly, all the questions just repeat themselves, especially the longer mark questions at the end, they always, you see the same pattern coming up and up again and again, so if you know how to solve one of them, you can know the process of solving the others, because they're just different numbers, but it's the same process. And my next tip, which leads on from using Sean because he follows a specification, is to follow your specification. Because your specification is so important. You just need to know what's on there. Sometimes textbooks can have extra information or stuff that you don't really need to know. But if you've got the specification in front of you, you can be like, I need to know this, I need to know that, I need to know that. And you can have a little tick list and be like, maybe that's something which I'm not sure about and highlight it and then find a YouTube video on it to watch later. That is such an underrated resource that I personally need to use more in my A-level revision too. Now my next tip is to use past papers with the mark scheme. Personally, when I did my GCSEs, I didn't really do that thing of doing past papers like in time conditions and then marking them because I found GCSEs, maths and sciences to be not too time pressured. Obviously, if you're finding time a struggle, it's good to time pressure yourself whilst practicing, but I personally found it more about the fact that I needed to refine my processes rather than my time timekeeping so I made sure to just go over past paper questions but I also had the mark scheme in front of me so I do one question try and think about what I'd put and then mark it straight away and then write down the correct answer from the mark scheme and I just found that a bit more useful than say going over a whole paper and doing it and then marking the whole paper because I could see the correct answer from the mark scheme straight away that's just a personal preference so you might not find it very helpful but personally I think that saved me a bit of time and my next tip is the fact that questions just always repeat themselves, science questions and math questions, I think I mentioned this before, but the trick is that once you know how to do something, just make sure you fully understand it. If you don't understand it, ask for your teacher's help. But once you understand it, you should be able to get it in the future because you've got that understanding and you know the process behind how to get all the marks. Now my last tip is to know all your science practicals really well and to know all the questions that they could ask you on them. Sean's science practical videos are top notch, go and watch all of them and take notes because in GCSE science your 
next paper has 15% of the marks allocated to practical questions. So one thing that you can do is to also concentrate a bit in class to make sure that you know what's going on in practicals. And I clearly didn't because I had to go over Sean's videos many times before I actually got what the practicals meant. But yeah, those are my five top tips for GCSE Maths and Science. I hope you found this useful. I know that sometimes it may seem like you'll never get a concept or that things just seem too hard or too difficult, but honestly, when I was first doing maths GCSE papers, I was getting sevens and stuff in the Christmas before the summer exams, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh, like what's happening, you know? But as I did more and more exam papers, I gradually just got the hang of it. And you kind of learn through doing practice questions. So don't worry if you feel like you don't know any everything yet to begin to start doing practice papers. And don't worry about running out of practice papers either, because you can always redo practice papers. And I found that especially useful to remind me of the things that pop up again and again. So good luck with all your studies, you can do this. GCSEs are very fun to revise for. You can also quiz your friends on science and not so much on maths. You have to just, you know, get grinding on the questions yourself. But the day before a science exam, for instance, just sit outside with a friend and test each other on some facts that you need to know and just make sure that you're fully prepared. So have fun, you've got this, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.